What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to the show. If you got your 420, man, puff, puff, pass, I say. It's time to puff, puff, pass. Wake and bake, baby. It's Monday. I know you guys are all burnt out from the weekend. At least you guys better be. Uh, you should have been partying all weekend. Before I begin, all you musicians out there. I am looking for an official Insane Throttle Biker News introduction and outro. If you can make something up, you might be able to make some change for yourself. Insane Throttle. Come on, we need one. A good intro song. Uh, if you want to get involved in the project, help me out, give me a, an official song, you're looking at info at insanethrottlebikernews.com, or you can leave a message over on 847-957-1686, and I will get uh, back with you right away, uh, not only for the show, but we got the radio station too, I'm doing the sweepers and all that good stuff for the radio. It'd be nice to have an official song by one of our uh, listeners, and then you get uh, your band out there, too, because I'll bring you on the show. Anyway, Antifa, you idiots! A few of them showed up in Sturges. Yes, and, you know, these are the ones that want to defund the cops. Well, <laughs> it took the cops to protect them. It's funny, man. They got wolf-packed. Uh, one of these uh, Antifa tried to kick a bike and boom, everybody swarmed. And next thing you know, uh, the cops were trying to get everybody off. I got the video off YouTube I'm going to be showing you. But that just goes to show you how ignorant these people are. And, you know, you got to give them balls for trying to protest with all them bikers around. Uh, but yeah, and that's smart, you dummies. You're, you're just ignorant fools. So we're going to be uh, looking at that Antifa video. Also, my my God, we got Hells Angels, Mongols, Banditos, oh my, in the news. As well, something down in uh, Alabama, man. Uh, some kind of club I've never heard of, uh, but I guess there was they were being naughty down there. Naughty, naughty. They acting a fool down there in Alabama. You know, and I love Alabama. You know, I got... Uh, family down in uh, Mississippi so go to Red Bay all the time Alabama right there on the northwestern corner of the state uh, but I never went any further than that uh, so yeah we got that in the news lots of news my gosh my gosh and for a Monday well, what am I talking about? It was the weekend, so yeah, people are going to act a fool a little bit. Uh, but what do you guys think of this Antifa showing up at Sturges? I think there was only like, uh, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, I don't know, uh, from what I can see from the video. But it is making its rounds <laughs> right now. And you know what? It gives you a giggle. It does. It gives you a giggle. It's like, wow, do we raise these type of kids, really? Uh, you know what? My generation are putzes. Putzes. Generation X was the last real generation to have any brains. Okay, I'm sorry to say that. I really am. Uh, but come on, Generation X, we, you know, didn't have the cell phones, didn't have this or that, and we turned out pretty good, and we're the ones that were jumping our little, uh, you know, diamondbacks or mongooses and busting our arms. These kids won't even leave the damn room anymore, man, with them freaking video games. Remember we had Atari, what was it, 2600 or some crap? Yeah, we raised a bunch of morons. Sad state of affairs, sad state of affairs. Uh, also, we've been getting a lot of feedback on our coverage of Cannon. He was the uh, five-year-old boy that was killed down in North Carolina by that scumbag. Uh, it seems like it's blown up on the net, man, even though it took mainstream media uh, a week to cover it. Damn, people pissed, and you know what? I'm glad to see it. Finally, finally, it takes that, uh, you know, tragedy of a little boy to wake up a lot of people to what's going on out there. Uh, yeah, of course, you know, I talked about the haters over on our Facebook page. You know, I seen some of you guys replying, so that was cool. Uh, you know, I, I just don't know how these people think. That's why I wanted to get one of these liberal snowflakes on my show. 
That way we can, you know, discuss, you know, their ideology, the way they think. Because I think it's important to understand the little scumbags and where they're coming from. You know, a lot of people, and then the arguments did break out where uh, they were blaming the ghettos. It was, you know, their fault, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all that jive. And you know what? There's a lot of debate to that and a lot of interesting debate that could start up. But, man, is this country something else right now? It really is, man. It's like freaking Armageddon coming. You know, they have, uh, did you hear that come out of, uh, what is it, the San Andreas Fault or whatever? Uh, they're worried about a big one. Here I am hoping that California breaks off from the, you know, the rest of the United States. But, but before it does... I'm hoping the subscribers to the show out there come, you know, get into the safety. Hey, I'm thinking about you guys. I'm thinking about you guys. <laughs> but we have a lot of news today. Uh, don't forget, power rock on, baby. Make sure you like this video and subscribe, as well as over on iTunes, Spotify, all that good noise. But let's get on to the news. Man, got a lot of news happening today. We're going over to the YouTube, man. Device Travels, uh, their channel. It looks like a pretty decent channel. Uh, man, they already got 2,500,000 views on this sucker. Uh, Antifa arrives, and this is, uh, let's take a look. There's the swarm. Something's going on. <laughs> the cops have to surround them. Let's watch this protester in the purple here. Oh, they're taking him down. There they go. They got him down. Look at them all. Ooh, the cops are right on them. them. They got their tasers out. Wow. If you're on the radio, what they're doing now is they got the dude down from Antifa. That is, uh, you got a freaking uh, dog over there wanting to get at him. Uh, the cops are trying to push back the bikers. It's lined up, ready to go. It's on Main Street, baby. Main Street. Oh, man, you can hear him going nuts right now. He's zooming in on one of the Antifa that they got on the ground. Yeah, the cops had their uh, tasers going. Dude has purple hair, man. Tinkerbell right there. Now they're walking him out. They're getting Antifa out of there before uh, they get hurt is what's going on. It's funny, man. I thought Antifa was against uh, the cops and they wanted it defunded. But, yeah, look at this stuff going on. Look at it going on. Oh, my God. It looks like a hippie there. You guys got to come on over from the radio and check this out. This is funny crap right here, man. They're lucky it wasn't a bunch of club guys sitting right there, man. They would have bum-rushed them. But, yeah, now the cops are surrounding them. They're really afraid that they're going to get uh, wolf-packed by these bikers, man. You know, the first thing that's going to come out uh, from this is that the bikers weren't wearing masks. That's what, how CNN or MSNBC is going to be covering this, is there's no mask on everybody. It's a melting pot or a, you know, Petri dish uh, cesspool for masks. At least Antifa were wearing masks. And now you can see the cops are escorting out the Antifa matters. I feel like I'm doing a play-by-play -play here on the radio anyway and then you're starting to see the bikers following and they're escorting them out of town right now but uh, yeah you know be and I know there's another video out here before that rat pack by the cops the bikers uh, started wolf packing these guys Oh yeah, they got uh, they got Trump signs going. They got the rebel flags going. Uh, they're walking them right out of town, right out of town. Main Street actually looks pretty damn uh, packed right now. That you know that's pretty cool. I didn't know if uh, COVID was gonna 
gonna make it to where a lot of people didn't show up but it looks uh, pretty decent right now but it don't look packed like it used to be but you can just see the bikers out there's law tigers uh advertisement out there hey i gave you a freaking uh bump right there but they're leading them straight out of the town man them cops are worried about these guys getting messed up now they want to block off the bikers uh, from following them yeah the cops are trying to block them off right now uh please stay please stay uh then you got a line of our bikers and all that stuff ignorance is freaking blitz baby ignorance is blitz <laughs> i love it love it uh again this is off of De uh, device travels and it says the title speaks for itself uh rock and roll then uh some of the comments let's take a look this is how your comments up here uh on my end actually and everybody else's end uh every city where leadership is defunding the police should start off by not protecting the protesters and then post their rallies in the paper so those who do respect the law and police can show up and send them home that's uh from one antifa at sturges will now now that's a whole new level of stupidity <laughs> i agree uh let's go out to lafayette and I, you know what i'm sure that you guys would be able to find uh the other videos and stuff if I find some more, I'll uh, get it on the radio. But that was your play-by-play -play on the radio, baby. Uh, dot com. Lafayette police identify people involved in Saturday night's fatal stabbing. Lafayette police confirms that one person is dead and three people are injured following a stabbing incident. Uh, on Saturday around 10.21 p.m., Lafayette police responded to a gang-related fight. That's them saying it, not me, so get off my balls. At the Lafayette Crossing uh, Strip Mall, police say two men, Colton Mitchell and Brandon Wilcox, stepped outside of the Big League Sports Bar and Grill in Lafayette. After stepping outside, they were confronted by a group from the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Police say Nicholas Lawson first attacked Colton Mitchell by hitting him in the head with some sort of metal object. Mitchell then attacked back, stabbing Lawson in the chest. Lawson died on the, at the scene. Mitchell was taken to an area hospital for treatment. Another man, Jason Hathaway, attacked a bouncer, Brandon Osborne, with brass knuckles. Osborne was taken uh, to the hospital for treatment. During a fight, Brandon Johnson threatened Osborne with a handgun. Johnson and Hathaway were then arrested. Mugshots provided by the Tippecanoe. Tippecanoe! What was that one, uh... There was a saying, Tip Canoe or something in the 1800s or somebody running for uh, president. Uh, County Sheriff's Officer, J.C. Hathaway top, Brandon Johnson below. That's them right there. Uh, Jason Hathaway is facing charges of battery with a deadly weapon and aggravated battery. Brandon Johnson is facing a charge of pointing a firearm. I don't get that, man. You pull a firearm, you use that crap. Uh, let's see here. News 18 asked Lafayette police for clarification on who is involved with uh, the Hells Angels. LPD was able to tell us the fight was between members of the Mongols Motorcycle Club and the Hells Angels. However, they are not releasing specifics on who is associated with what club due to the investigation news 18 also asked for where the two groups are from again they could not tell us at the time shannon payton was the third person injured during the fight he was stabbed in the torso and transferred to local hospital police surrounded the entire strip mall located on state route uh, road 26 just east of i-65 lafayette police had canines a drone and eventually a swat team arrive the coroner arrived uh, at about 3 a.m wait a second here 
this all happened around 10.30, and by the time they were there, 11 o'clock, three, or what, four, five hours, really, to get the freaking corner or whatever? Uh, News 18 left the scene around 3.15 a.m. Police still had the strip mall surrounded, and the bikers involved were still on the scene. Police tell News 18 no one in the hospital is dealing with life-threatening injuries. Police are still investigating the fight. Rock and roll. Uh, then there was a, a clarification from the LPD. The fight was between members of the Mongols Bike Club and the Hell's Angels Bike Club. Uh, then they're not uh, specifying it. Uh, then they released uh, a thing here. Uh, the Lafayette Police Department is investigating the death that occurred on the big league uh, sports bar. Uh, on August 15th at 20, uh, 10.21, officers responded to a report of a fight taking place between two rival motorcycle clubs. One person was found deceased on the scene. The investigation has determined that Col Colton Mitchell and Brandon Wilcox were inside the big league sports bar and stepped outside. And then it goes on, they were confronted, so I'm taking Colin or Col Colton and Brandon are Mongols. I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying that's what it looked like. Uh, at least uh, they were doing... It looks like self-defense to me. Uh, let's see here. They got a video here. Let's see a bit of play. Okay, they're showing the scene right now. Again, if you're on the radio, you got to come on over here. Uh, but this is the Lafayette uh, bar where the it happened. It looks like somebody is on the ground right now. Uh, and all that stuff. So, uh, let's see here. Lafayette police identify people involved in Saturday night stabbing. Okay, that out of Lafayette, Indiana. That's off I-65. That is the most boringest freaking highway in Indiana. My God. You know what? I have a thing against corn now since I was uh, stranded in a cornfield on the Harley when that guy replaced a freaking uh, clutch and stuff and didn't kind of do it right. Let's just put it that way. And uh, yeah, it's nothing but corn. It's just corn. It's like a nightmare. It's like children of the corn. If you guys ever seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. So my God. Uh, let's see here what we got here. Uh, that was the Lafayette one. Agreed. Now, let's go to click to uh, Houston.com. Like I said, it's Hells Angels, uh, Mongols, Banditos. Oh, my, in the news today. Uh, let's take a listen if it comes up here. New this morning, a shooting outside of a North Houston bar leaves one man dead and another hurt. All unfolded on Fulton Street near Halpern. Investigators say two groups of people were thrown out of another bar for arguing. Then they met at the North Houston bar where the shooting happened. By the time police arrived, one man identified as one woman's on Christopher the ground. Rizzo was dead and another was hurt and taken to the hospital. Investigators believe Rizzo and his friends were involved in some sort of argument with a motorcycle gang known as the Banditos and that that fight eventually led up to the shooting. And just into the newsroom, here's a look at the men police are looking for in connection to that case. They're calling them persons of interest. If you recognize any of them, please give police a call. Okay, that was uh, that one right now. Uh, this out of Houston, Texas, it's at around 935. Uh, they were dispatched to a shooting in the 2800 block of Fulton Street. On arrival, uh, officers observed a male lying on the sidewalk with multiple gunshot wounds. Uh, paramedics rendered aid. However, the victim later identified as Christopher Rizzo was pronounced dead at the scene. Multiple witnesses told investigators Rizzo and his friends were involved in an altercation with the motorcycle gang known as the Banditos inside a bar prior to the shooting. Uh, he was shot and killed. At least one other man was injured. Uh, he was taken to the, there was a man that was taken to the hospital via private transport before being airlifted to Memorial Hermon. So, and then they recovered two weapons from the scene. Uh, 
So they're going to get a murder charge coming out of this one. You can bet on that one. Now, let's go down to Alabama, man. This is the one I really didn't know here. Everybody, anybody in Alabama heard of this club? Seven Deadly Sins. Never heard of them. Anyway, Alabama mass shootings stem from dispute in Seven Deadly Sins Club. They look like a bunch of kids. Uh, one of the deadliest shootings in Alabama history happened because of a dispute between members of a local group called the Seven Deadly Sins Motorcycle Club. Court testimony revealed the club's president and vice president, 22-year-old Frederick Rogers, and 19-year-old John Legg are charged with capital murder in the killings of club member Jeremy Roberts and six other people. Holy crap. You guys are like nuts, man, these kids. Holy cow, that's like seven freaking people. It happened on the night of June 4th at the home in uh, the Valermosa Springs community in Morgan uh, County, about 10-minute drive from uh, the Huntsville city limits. This had to be a rocket club or something. or You know what? It's probably one of them clubs that they do that freaking crap on YouTube or something with that, uh, what is that, Grand Theft Auto? Uh, after hearing more than three hours of testimony from FBI Special Agent Chris uh, Hendon, Morgan Ergen County District Judge Brent Craig ruled prosecutors have enough evidence, probable cause, for the charges against the two suspects. Legg and Rogers are also charged with shooting into an occupied building in a separate incident. What are these guys, crack babies or something? Zombies? I don't know. They're crazy. The cases will be uh, presented to the grand jury for consideration of indictments. He uh, had and testified uh, that Rogers admitted to investigators that he and Legg killed 22-year-old Roberts, the club's enforcer. Oh my god. It's like, uh, has anybody heard of these people? Uh, Roberts had gone rogue, stolen weapons from the club, and allegedly committed crimes that weren't sanctioned by the club? Oh my god, they Jax Teller down there, man. That son's an anarchy crap just rubbing off. They have somebody as young as 17 in this uh, that were killed. They admitted to... Uh, that they killed the Tammy England Muzzy, 45, Emily Brooke uh, Payne, 21, Roger Lee Jones, 19, William Zane Hodden, 18, James Wayne Bedford, 22. Uh, so sad state of affairs right there. A lot of young kids in that. Quote, it is a horrific scene and to be able to process it will take some time. Uh, Morgan County Sheriff spokesman Mike Swafford said at the time, because of the number of the victims, the case is believed to be one of the deadliest mass shootings in Alabama history. Uh, they happened when Lagan Rogers were invited to a dinner at Muzzy's home uh, that Thursday night. Everyone at the home was shot multiple times and their bodies were found in various places throughout the home and garage. Gasoline had been poured over the bodies some of which were partially burned by a fire set after the shootings. My God, man, that, that's a sad state of affairs right there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, in a statement, Rogers said he and Leg were scared about retaliation from the Southern Brotherhood, so they decided to kill Roberts. Uh, sad state of affairs right there, man. It goes on and on if you want to read uh, the story on AL, or AL.com, but... I'll research see what that Seven Deadly Skins Club is. Uh, sad state of affairs right here, man. The thing, I don't know if you know, uh, but no, let's just read it. Uh, this from uh, GebhardDaily.com. Motorcycle Racer 69 critically injured in a 252 mile an hour crash at the Bonneville Salt Flats. Ralph Hudson, boy, 69 years old. That's awesome. Uh, let's listen uh, a little bit to his uh, video so you know what he is and all that. Did you feel like a five mile course and then a shutdown area, you're going to play another five? But it's only two thirds of what they've got here. That's a beautiful, I love the, so this the is, beauty of the salt flats. This is really pretty amazing. 
rock and roll. Uh, that's him right there. Uh, August 14th this happened. Uh, he was trying to set a record at the bon Bonneville Salt Flash. Uh, he uh, crashed Friday morning while traveling at 252 miles an hour. My God. Uh, Ralph Hudson, a veteran racer, crashed at about 8.20 a.m. Uh, and then there's a statement from the SCTA, the Southern California Timing Association, Quote, veteran rider Ralph Hudson, 80 or 69, lost control of his motorcycle land speed vehicle. Uh, he was attempting a speed record and was traveling approximately 252 miles an hour. Ralph was treated by medical uh, professionals at the scene and transfer, uh, transported by ambulance to life flight and flown to Intermountain Medical Center in Salt Lake City. Uh, he is critical. A helicopter met him about 10 minutes ago. This was during it was unfolding. He was in critical condition when he left the ground. Uh, he noted that vehicles do not race each other simultaneously during the Speed Week event where Hudson and his team were. They try to beat established records in solo races. No one else was injured on the ground. And if there is an update on this one, I will let you guys know. Now let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. NOPD officer arrested for domestic ex uh, abuse. No, you're not saying that. Uh, he has been uh, suspended. Uh, they said in an email, and M uh, yeah, you repeat the title, I get it. This is uh, from Chris McQuarrie out of 4 double double uh, L. The New Orleans Police Department announced the suspension of senior police officer Gerald Lee less than three hours after he was booked at 8 p.m. Uh, they said in an email the allegations were pertaining to actions unbecoming a police officer. The exact circumstances of the incident that led to Lee's arrest were not made public Friday. He faces one charge of domestic abuse. Uh, abuse and battery uh, shame 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 <laughs> you are now in the wall of shame <laughs> uh, let's go to my final thoughts shall we final thoughts baby here we come here from beggar syndicate cycles just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market apparel that's based all upon bikers baggers and brotherhood and ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Wow, a lot in the news today, isn't there? You know, I was actually thinking during the commercial break when I said, man, we didn't raise these kids right, my generation. And, you know, thinking about it a little deeper, because I'll think about it a little deep, it's like... We didn't provide them the guidance that our generation got from the older guys. Uh, there's a lot of people that I actually looked up to uh, when I first got in uh, the lifestyle. You know, you see two of them right there on uh, my back wall. If you're on the, the radio course, whenever I'm saying visual, come over to the YouTube, Facebook. Uh, first and foremost, there's Taco Bowman. And then on uh, the left side of me is J.R. Reed from the Sons of Silence. Those were giants among men uh, when I was coming up. You know, two different uh, types of clubs, but two great clubs in my eyes. Uh, yeah, I'm more favorable to the Midwest uh, clubs, you know, because I'm from Chicago. Uh, I guess it just depends where you're from, okay? That's that's what they always say is that's who you're going to support and stuff. Uh, yeah, I try to stay grounded, uh, tell both sides of the story. Uh, some people, you know, can hear it in my voice uh, when I'm doing some uh, types of stuff. They might say I'm a little biased and, hey. Aren't we all? At least I can admit that fault. But going back to, uh, you know, this kind of goes to this Antifa thing. Uh, not having guidance from a strong role models. Uh, I remember a guy, uh, 
you know what I I call them pops. Uh, you know I didn't really have a good uh, father, let's say that, growing up. And when I got into the club scene, you know, you looked up to him because man, he's a freaking giant. I'm talking giant among men. Uh, he's out of Chicago and West Side. Uh, you know, he was just one of them guys when he enters a room that you sit down, you shut up, and you listen. And I never seen a man more dedicated to the members in his club. Never. Ever. Uh, he fall on a sword for them. He would protect them. Uh, he would defend them right down uh, to the last, you know, breath. And he always gave advice. Always to the young ones. See, I was, uh, how old was I back then? I had to be 26 or 27 back then. Uh, and, uh, you know, at that age, you know, you're all ruckus and, you know, stupid. All stupid at that age. And you're full of cum. You're ready to go. You're ready to, uh, you know, hit it hard. And, you know, he always made sure you stayed in line. Uh and of course, you know he was with the uh you know the major one percenter club i was with the support club but even that he always made sure that we were okay and that's something that i regret my generation didn't pass down to these kids coming up right now uh you know like I talk about with the protocol videos and stuff like that, I'm glad BD's put over 800 of them out. And he put out his prospect Bible, his president's Bible's coming out. Uh, and a lot of clubs, they actually have the prospects. Read that prospect Bible. See, BD has so much knowledge and uh, all that stuff uh, from him being a national president. So that's pretty cool. So he's kind of instruction, you know, instructing uh, the younger crowd. But nothing could ever beat a guy like Pops, you know, being right there, being in, able to answer a question, uh, being able to get an ass chewing when you did wrong. You know, it's one. he's one of them guys that if he gave you an ass chewing, man, you felt like a freaking tiny person at that point. Because not only is he correcting you because you screwed up, but he's disappointed. And I think that's one of the biggest things that... I never wanted to do was disappoint him. <laughs> you know, that's the, like the worst thing that you could do to them type of guys. And for those that, and I'm sure the guys that knew uh, and served with Taco Bowman or J.R. Reed, they felt the same way. Uh, growing up, you know, in Chicago and being interested in the bikes and the clubs and all that type of stuff, Man, was Taco a giant, freaking giant, a true outlaw's outlaw, baby. And, you know, sad state of affairs, sad state of affairs, uh, how the feds uh, wouldn't leave him alone, and eventually uh, they got him, and, uh, you know, but he was a true giant. He didn't take no deals. He went and did his thing, and those are the men that you do look up to. Now a lot of people are going to come back and say, well, they did this and they did that. Well, that's life. That's what you got to do to survive. That's why in the last video that I did, uh, I talked about you're not entitled to do whatever you want. You got to fight for everything you get. Now, I did not say because there was one schlock that came back and said, you did, you said this and said that. And like I said, it goes on to what's going on in the situation and how I feel. Because I'm not going to, you know, say, hey, you know, I'm going to try to be as real as I can. Uh, but they came back and said, you know, you're, uh, you know, bias this, bias this, whatever. But when I was talking in that video... I never once said, hey, don't start your own motorcycle club. I said you shouldn't. 
And that's when everybody came back with the constitutional argument, all that stuff. What I said was you're not entitled to. Just to think you can throw on something and next thing you know, you're a club. Well, you got to back it up. And when people come calling like the dominance, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to sit there and throw that constitutional argument at them? Or are you going to stand up for your colors? Because after all, it was you who thought that you can just throw them on, start your thing, and everything to be honky-dory. That just ain't life. And it's interesting to see how people react to that type of stuff. You know, I did one uh, segment a long time ago. Uh, man, I've been doing this a long time. Where a guy bought a club's colors off the internet. You know, that Chinese eBay crap. Caught it all up. And next thing was showing it online. We covered the story. Next thing you know, uh, they were gone the next day. Shut down Charter and ran. So... How is that even, how do you even take pride into something like that? It's hard enough to get in a club started that's, uh, you know, blessed and letting it live five years, but to just join, and I don't even understand why people would join that stuff, uh, but just to just start up and do your thing and not, wor you know, prospect. And that's why everybody always asks me about this Ray Lebesky, you know, lollipop. Why I was so at him all the time. The dude never prospected once. Not even for another club. And here he does this mail order stuff. Uh, that's how the Iron Order started. They kicked him out. Then he went to Iron Legacy. And here he is bossing prospects around like he knows what the hell's going on. Dude never prospected one day in his freaking life. And now you're an international VP, and I hear that you, uh, you know, so it don't happen like it happened in Iron Order. You put it in the bylaws, you can never get kicked out. That's saying something about your leadership style is you don't trust your own people. And that's a sad state of affairs right there. And I feel sorry for people that actually join the club. I know there's a lot of people who want to be a part of clubs, but there's so many out there that fits your personality that you don't have to go to a club like that. They get no respect, the Iron Legacy. Why? Because the one who started it and Boner out in uh, Massachusetts, is it Playboy is his name, uh, they schlucks. Straight up schlucks. Uh, personally, I don't understand how you can have cops in your club, and that's an understanding that we'll never have. You know, I'll never figure it out in you know, any of them clubs. Uh, but that being said, uh, I think the kids are acting out the way they are because it's our fault. It's plain and simple our fault. My generation didn't raise them well. We didn't have people like I talked about uh, guiding them showing them the way of life and it's even leaked into the biker scene now where a lot of people feel entitled to do what they want well it looks like antifa figured out real quick in sturges that it ain't portland it ain't no liberal city where people are just gonna stand around and let it happen no sir we <laughs> but again there's probably videos circulating all over the place that was only one video that uh i found on it so yeah about 10 you know it wasn't a whole big thing that showed up because if they did they would have got slaughtered you know that's let's just be real they would have got slaughtered uh them guys were rushed out of there uh cops warned them to protect them the whole nine yards uh, for the stories going on uh, in the news today, wow, man, just a lot of news for this segment, wasn't it? Uh, one thing, you know, with the wall of shame, it's always the, you know, I say it all the time. It's like, do you guys even get it? It's, uh, is it a power trip on these guys' part? I don't know. So, uh, you know, the club stuff's the club stuff. You're going to sit here and you're going to watch the comments. Why can't clubs all get along? 
and it's just not feasible okay there's too many years of freaking strife between clubs so i don't get the only ones who really say that are ones that are not in clubs it's like really what do you care yeah it's gonna bring the heat down by god all these clubs know it but there's nothing that you i or anybody else can do so stop putting them kind of arguments on our comment section because it's not realistic. It's not going to happen. Never. Ever. You got to think about it. These clubs lost brothers to the other clubs. They A lot of guys went to prison for that patch. And, may, and I guess that's one of the biggest reasons why uh, clubs like the Iron Legacy or the other ones, whatever you call them, pop-up clubs, they get turned on real quick is because these guys put in the work they went through the prospect period by the way why is everybody scared of the prospect period that is like the funnest type of stuff ever man and then the accomplishment you feel after you get through it but anyway these people earn their patches they just didn't go to an embroidery store and next thing you know make a design no, they earned it. They bled for it. They cried together for it. They lost people. So I wasn't trying to be a, a dick in that video where it was actually titled, uh, what was it? You're not entitled to start a motorcycle club. So I didn't mean to be a dick. Well, what am I talking about? I am a dick. I'm condescending. That's what uh, some people have been saying lately about that, where... I guess you're condescending when you give a freaking opinion or something nowadays. Uh, but, you know, just think about it before you get into something like that. Because when you get on the streets, you're not on the internet no more. You're on the streets. It's the real deal. It's the real game. And if you don't know how to play it, well, you're going to get hurt. You know, listen to some of BD's videos and you know, hopefully that'll help you out a little bit. But... I'd go straight up traditional, man, and do it the right way because you'll get a lot of partying going on, a lot of uh, friendships coming out of that stuff. Uh, our thoughts are with uh, the racer out in uh, the flats. Hopefully, uh, he recovers and stuff. So, with that, uh, don't forget, man, if you're a band or, you know, you're a musician and you want to do uh, Insane Throttle uh, Motorcycle Madhouse Radio's official intros and outros, give me a call, 847-957-1686. Leave a voicemail because that line gets tied up a lot. Also, if you can't do that, info at InsaneThrottleBikerNews.com. After you uh, make up the song, we'll do a reveal, and I'll bring you on the radio, man. Introduce your band and stuff, and also play all your tracks on the radio to get you out there when it premieres next month. With that, you guys take care. Be careful. Get some putty and puff, puff, pass, baby. Puff, puff, pass. I said, See you guys I later, man. You be careful out there. Cow. Check so us out on Instagram. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycling news, motorcycle rallies, and bikers helping the community motorcycle club editorials and more and don't forget to visit us on facebook get involved in the conversation watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more also we have instagram yes instagram we have material that is not seen anywhere else so don't forget get on our platforms check out your daily biker news rock on Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. 
I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all the beggars, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at beggarsyndicatecycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!